from having many babies or producing many. She will go and get spayed or neutered tomorrow morning. Hello, precious. And we'll cover her up with this blanket so she'll be calm and peaceful. Night, night. There are between 60 and 100 million ferals and stray cats in America. Cats are not dispensable. They're not just to be thrown away. They have feelings, they love, they feel nurtured, they know they're abandoned. I'm Nagunavati. I'm a cat caretaker. So I take care of a community cat colony. And my husband and I also own and operate Lake Center Yoga and have so for the last 20 years. And we have a colony there as well, a rehabilitated feral colony. They're all friendly and loving now. A cat colony is primarily made up of feral cats. And those are cats that have been abandoned or have been procreated by abandoned cats. And generally they are not spayed and neutered, so they continue to procreate strays. They've been abandoned, so you can tell the difference because they'll come up to you, they'll meow at you. The ferals just will run. They now want to be near humans at first. I met a lady named Carol. I saw her at a mobile station four years ago feeding these stray cats. And um, I was amazed and I asked her, how often she did it. She did it seven days a week, so I offered to help her. And then I started out helping her three days a week, and then four, and now she's handicapped, so I feed seven days a week. They can hear my car, which is a Prius, no sound. They know when it's there, and you see them come across the field. So we're like the Pied Piper going back to the woods to feed them. I used to feed closer, but there are actually a lot of run-ins with people who hate cats and were very um, abusive towards me and threatened the cats' um, lives and my life. And um, so I moved the cats back near the forest and that's better for everybody. And I changed my feeding time, so hopefully I will avoid those types of people who do that kind of thing. TNR stands for trap, neuter, and release. So some people think that, that they don't understand trapping. So um, one of the places that we, we trap, neuter, and release is a, is a trailer park, and the lady thought it was cruel. So we educated her, that's a big part, that it's not tr cruel, and that they come back healthier and happier. So trap, neuter, and release is the best solution for controlling these community cat colonies. Some people say relocate. No, the other colonies will not accept them. Uh, eradicate, kill them. If you relocate or eradicate, new cats are just gonna come in and they won't be fixed either. So, um, trap, neuter, release solves it. The trapping routine is usually in the evenings around 6.30 and we set up the trap at the location, put food in it, and then we just disappear around the corner briefly. Doesn't take long. They go around the trap and check it out, and then one goes in and boom. And we run really quickly to cover it so they don't get upset, calms them down. And then we keep the trap overnight, the cat in there, and then take it the next morning to be um, spayed or neutered. Even once they're trapped, they know it's a good thing for them. I think they, they have that sense that they're gonna be better, healthier, and uh, you know, there's no fights after they trap. They're not competing for that mating thing. It's so much better for them. Two weeks ago, someone called us and told us there was a cat living in a field, and she was obviously abandoned or lost, and she had 
like a cup cap, like a star, like a coffee cup cap. Like she might have been trying to get milk or something, and it was very tight around her neck. So we were able to trap her the next morning and uh, take her to spay and save, and they cut that plastic off, spayed her, dewormed her, defleed her, gave her her shots, and then she was clearly too domesticated to put back out there. It's very dangerous. People think they can just put their cats out. Domesticated cats do not have the tools to live in the wild. Um, make them pet friendly in your house, love them, socialize them, make them part of your family, you know? Make a commitment. I brought her home to Foster to take up to PetSmart on the weekends to um, cattails adoptions and find her a nice home, but she was three years old and all it took was um, my husband's one look at her and he said, well, you just might as well keep her. So, mission accomplished. Lake Center Yoga finances the spay and saves and we do fundraising to do at least two a week. I raise money for animal welfare by some of our profits from the yoga classes go there and some students uh, donate money for cat food and and I just had the idea one day of uh, maybe selling some of these things to uh, put the proceeds for helping the cats as well. I teach yoga as a career and been doing that for over 20 years, practicing yoga over half my life. Cats I've had, the one thing maybe I've had longer than yoga, I've had a cat my whole life. My mother had cats, so I don't even know what it's like to live without a cat. They kind of remind you of a higher vibration of love and very relaxing and peaceful. It's kind of a good reminder to have them as well as other animals do the same thing. Some of the different items that we sell are pendants. Uh, these pendants are like this pendant that goes around your neck and we I make all different colors of the rainbow and they also keychains and these are like refrigerator magnets and just little things you can hold that just feel good to carry with you and kind of therapeutic or to calm you down just to uh, like it's very relaxing kind of like animals are I like making the art pieces because it relates to the different colors and different vibrations and as I'm making them it's using my hands it's using my creativity it's using uh, uh, the different colors which uh, you know in a way just therapeutic working on colors yourself so just uh, it's very relaxing to me uh, I like to make things and I, I enjoy using my creativity so it's uh, pleasurable for me to do something and have it beneficial for animal welfares and probably feed maybe like 40, 40 cats a week or something like that between our cats uh, at the studio and the feral cats out at the colonies where they catch, catch them and things like that. So it costs money to uh, fix them and feed them and, uh, and just to contribute to that along with the people that from our studio that you know graciously donate some money for that along with um, uh, all the selfless service of just the labor it takes to do all that so just my little part it's nice to be able to put a little help and do something that I enjoy doing actually saving animals uh, affect my life it's just more of a natural thing I think that's happened over time that as I became more, you know, attuned to my own self and maybe that better part of myself that's more compassionate, you know, you start, you know, treating other people nicer and then you start thinking kind of beyond yourself, you know, like you want to help out in all the suffering, you know, that's on the earth in whatever way that we can. and. As long as we're in our studio, I think the future will be that we'll just continue to help animals out 
continue to promote um, you know uh, ahimsa which is nonviolence uh, in our lifestyles and the way that we uh, take care of ourselves as as well as our environment around us and you know nonviolence for all of all living creatures you can become a cat community cat caretaker and that is you provide the food the water if possible the shelter for a colony and um, you know you just observe them um, take care of them get them all spayed and neutered call us if you need that done and that's the thing so many people feed and they don't spay and neuter because they don't know where or how or what and I didn't either then they get kittens, 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 and the mouths to feed becomes unmanageable. So trap, neuter, and release is the key. So that's great, just take on a colony, but then get in touch with a group that does TNR. You can support organizations or agencies or a cat caretaker, help them buy food, it's expensive. We're paying $200 a month ourselves to spay and neuter so that's why we want to fundraise and and take in more you know they can volunteer to socialize feral kittens they can volunteer to spay to help at a spay neuter event for cats like a 5k or something just go on and you know find out what they're having spay and say ha has things all the time to volunteer for they can fundraise or write applications for grants for any agency helping they can help educate the neighbors about outdoor cats you know and donate to a community cat uh, fund I really encourage people to open their hearts and volunteer volunteerism is gives so many more returns than your time if everyone in America volunteered at something think what the world would be like and I love to help the vulnerable and um, these cats are vulnerable and not from fault of their own. Most ferals come from abandonment and um, their, their kittens and all are a legacy to that abandonment. You know, just do what you can. I didn't even realize that there were colonies until I met Carol. Almost behind every fast food place, every shop, there's a, a feral colony. So, you know, feed a colony, trap and neuter, um, get a little team together. Maybe you don't do seven nights a week. I would love a team, so if you want to help, call me. <laughs> but there are plenty of things to do, and it's just, just, you know, to take time out of your day or your week or your wallet to help something is called in yoga, seva. It's selfless service. And um, in every tradition, they encourage that. So I'm encouraging that.